Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. More difficult than one would assume to get your nuts good and prematurely rusty. Despite what your mother tells you, you don't have to go right until you're blind. You can just, once you get glasses, you kind of throttle back there. But this is for another experiment. We're trying to get these all rusty. It's taken quite a bit of time there. You know, they look rusty, but I want them seized good and proper. So what are we going to do in the interim? I know what we can do. Take some shit apart and see how she chooches. Now this, I got a buddy sent this to me. We're going to use this on the subject of destructive testing. We're going to use this for cycle testing ratchets and mechanisms because bringing them to failure tells us how strong the material ultimately is, but it doesn't tell us how many cycles until failure. And that's really... You know, that, that's another side of things that we really got to know. We, that's why, guys, we got to know. So, buddy sent me the old scrap bin reach around. I, I got to thank you, man, for keeping the old bum's eye peeled. <laughs> I've never been so stoked somebody jammed this big, long thing in my inbox on account of it's, it ain't no AliExpress flea base special craptacular Chineseium jobby made in Switzerland. That's right, like a Swiss watch. And you can tell on account of the sound it makes. Listen to this. And it runs all the way down. It's still chooching all the way down to three volts. Now this is a 24 volter, so she'll probably go up to 50 volts. And listen to the sound of her wah. Beautiful, so I can't wait to get inside and see what is going on because it's going to be something special. Enthusiasm slightly reduced on account of this no wipe label. Of course, having a no wipe is perfect after a, a big beer shit, but ain't no fucking good at all on labels on account of you just, you, you just whiff this with brake clean and all the information is gone forever. However, we see here it is a magnetic electromotorin Swiss made. 6,000 newtons in uh, human readable units, of course, kilograms, uh, 2.2 newtons to the apple. A uh, thousand weight of apples is 250 pounds. So that's uh, 1,350 pounds of force that'll put out more than enough to cycle any size ratchet you're looking for. So that is perfect. We got here the, the pigtail end off of her already and some extra extraneous signaling wires here, so there might be something interesting going on in there. We won't know, of course, until we get into the meter. Off the tail end here, a nice aluminium die cast. The, sorry, the, the reflectivity here of this, uh, of this extrusion is messing off the white balance, so it looks a little dark, I can assure you. It ain't dark from where I'm looking. We did put a little bit of silicon carney on there, what for keeping the, uh, the, the big chunks of water out, but water is still going to get in there. It's not a, a great job and it's not gasketed. A little disappointing there. Another interesting weird oh, bit of weirdness here. There's a transmission style snap ring but it's not in a groove of any kind. It's more like a, a spacer. Very strange arrangement. I'm not sure how this exactly comes apart but I kind of got fetched up here and then I, I don't want to pull this, you know, I don't want to ruin it on account of it being a Gucci <laughs> linear actuator. Might not go back together as well as I thought, but there are some fasteners right here. We'll give these a try. See if, yeah. So plugged off. So this has got to be, hopefully this holds the whole thing together. And of course the hole is loaded full of schmoo. Can't get the Jesus thing out. Which is why we trust in the power of magnets. Ha <laughs> ha! Stupid like a fox! <laughs> no. Yeah, no, baby, I, I have no idea how the pole got in the bottom of the popcorn. Uh, there we go, there we go. Had to come at her from reverse. She's a coming. Keep her coming! Keep her co Oh, fuck. Huh. How clever of them to have added a Slim Jim, but for getting the insides out. Them wily Swedes. Oh, ho, ho. Swiss. Fuck. It's been nice knowing you, boys. 
It's been nice knowing you. Oh, look at that. Fucking sweet 16 and never been chooched. Now uh, here's a nice, long, girthy, heavy, stout aluminum cross section. <laughs> and uh, that of course is an extruded section there. Very nice. In the end here, in the end of the gland, there's a plastic bumper. And as opposed to the hydraulic cylinder, which has a different force pulling as retracting because of a different surface area, you got to subtract the surface area of the rod. This has the same force going that way as that way. And because this is, is a, a ball, um, what is it, a ball? A ball twister. Oh, that's, oh, that's my buddy's wife. Ball screw, a ball screw. That's my buddy's girlfriend. <laughs> uh, this has the same force either way. So here we go and very nicely machined. Some very high quality grease. No molybdenum disulfide. Of course you don't need it because the surfaces in there are very very well machined so that appears to be some sort of high temperature sulfonate grease you know that white stuff that doesn't doesn't need doesn't need any red dye number five food coloring in order to make it look like it's actually doing anything there's the drive coupler mystery the first there's this jesus clip and that's preventing that from turning and of course this gets screwed into the housing so what gives it? this would need now this guy of course needs to stay stationary otherwise the whole thing spins so this needs to spin in order for this to uh, extend cock routine but what is going on here have I maybe ruined something and then the slim jim appears to be for actuating the limit switches forward and reverse so you don't go over travel and destroy something on the construction side we've got some deller in here good lubricitous properties and then a stainless steel just looks like 18.8 or 304 similar and we're yeah we we got no magnetism whole shitload where that rod is no magnetism along the shaft until we get to the very gland end and then whoa there's a little a little mushroom tip and lo and behold it's magnetic it's not this pin bore here it's because this has been cold worked. And of course, we went over that with the Yeti. Uh, cold working changes the body center cubic into fa no, face center cubic into body center and so forth and so on. So that is a stainless steel part. What's gotten magnetized at the very end because it has been cold worked. Staked on here. You see the bearing in here again. That same, that same way to assemble it. It's the bearing's been assembled in the bore and then staked on. So that ain't ever coming out a uh, non-replaceable part. I guess what you could do though is pull that bearing out. Now that is a big, beefy, deep groove ball bearing. So it can take a fair bit of thrust. At least, uh, <laughs> at least 6,000 Newtons, whatever that is. However many apples that is. You could pull that out and get rid of those stake-ons and just stake it on in a different location. And I, that, that would work. Uh, here's the brains of the operation. Unfortunately, we can see there are no Hall effect sensors. The Hall effect sensors would be great because it would be pulsing the whole time as it's moving along. You'd know exactly your position as long as you, you kept track of the pulses, of course. None of that's installed. Some big, beefy resistors here. Uh, 2R2, so very low. Uh, it's probably just current limiting resistors. Um, we can see the slim gem actuates on these here two momentary switches. It opens the circuit to uh, to prevent it from from going too far. And of course, the thing is, we also need a couple of diodes. Yeah, there we go. A couple of diodes so that current can get they can go in the one way, but as soon as you actuate, it stops. But if you swap the polarity, it can go in through the diode to get the thing to go in reverse. So not much to it really, big beefy components. Interesting little resistor here, one black line, zero ohm. So that's actually just a jumper. And some sort of Greek fire looking <laughs> balls. And I'm not quite sure, maybe some sort of thermistor. 
or thermostatic fuse if the thing gets too hot. She dechooches and uh, prevents prevents the uh, Lucas oil from getting out. <laughs> the Lucas oil smoke from getting out. Now this here's the motor, and this this is what actually does the job here. LV, 24 volt, 2007. It's already 10 years old. Doesn't look it. 50th week. With a modicum of probing, we'll get them angry pixies. Uh, well, mildly annoyed pixies chooching. So we can see we're going in reverse here, and here's so here's the slim jim that actuates on this guy over here, actuates on this guy over here. So as that extends out, we're going to actuate and it will stop it. Now, if we reverse the polarity, even with this actuated, and uh, interesting feature of that. Now we're in reverse, of course, so it doesn't matter. It's still going to reverse the process, but you can see quite a bit of voltage drop through that big diode because if we let off it goes faster we're getting probably a volt or two voltage drop across that at the high amperage we're drawing point five hundred milliamps of course the motor probably spin them a thing at a top rate 20,000 rip them something like that so we need to convert that into a usable torque and speed in order to do that, we go through the gearbox as witnessed by this broken off tab. Um, she's quite delicate, so we're going to make just some brass shims for sticking underneath those tabs. And that way we'll be able to get it apart without uh, too much damage. There, one, one out of six ain't bad. That fucking grease, man oh man. Something else sticks like shit on a blanket. And why? Maybe hung up on that one. What we can do? We'll just glue that black in place. Oh, look at that! Unfortunately, nylon gears. Boo hiss! Was wir hier haben is a permanent magnet DC motor, which will not run on AC. I had a brain fart there. The other, uh, it's not a universal motor if it has permanent magnets. We can see already. Even right down at one volt, less than one volt, she's already spinning a thing. We'll get her up to temperature here. At 30 volts. You can make a musical instrument out of that. Interesting sun gear here, input pinion. You see the screw on that, it almost looks like a carpenter screw, threaded carpenter screw, but it it, it fires on these, uh, not herringbone, uh, helically cut nylon gears on here. So that's what you're relying on, the, the failure mode, yeah, that's not that great, you know, surprisingly, not that great. You have a look at the outer casement here it's pretty easy to stretch that so that's where your failure is going to happen you're going to strip this gear out because this is going to get hot a little bit softer this uh, this appears to be appears to be nylon pa6 pa66 and no glass fiber reinforcing in here whatsoever you know what? Well, it's, it's a good thing we had a look at her. Sure is quiet. Seems real skookum. But having a peek at the innards, yeah. Not that great, man. Or half fast back together. That's working. Okay, good, good. So it's just something cocked up in there. And then there's got to be something going on when you press this into the, into the socket. It releases somehow. So it's just, just tight to begin with. And then once you get her in there, uh, she's good to go. Prognos shined his beautific light down below us and in keeping with the overarching story couldn't get the Jesus thing back together lo and behold there is the Hall effect sensor so a Hall effect sensor is a magnetic field sensor and it's on the back of the motor so what we can do here this appears to be two poles so every rotation yeah it's two poles so every uh, magnetic viewing film here, if I can sort of show you. 
yeah, you see that white line? That's that's where the two poles intersect. So two poles on there. Every rotation should give you. Uh, oh well, is there one Hall effect sensor or two? There's two, offset by. Looks like almost 90 degrees. It might not be 90. It might be more like 80 or 70, so that we can tell uh, which direction the thing is turning. But yeah, so essentially these things are going to pulse every time it makes one rotation. So that's twice per rotation. So that's super interesting. We can use that. We can use that for exact positioning. Holy old fuck boys, what a hassle to get that back together. Oh, for fuck's sakes, it's still locked up. Fuck! Well, rather not say it, I'm embarrassed too, but this thing's got me licked. Good and proper. Fourth try is normally the charm. They gotta have a jig, what, for putting this together, sliding it all in, all at the same time. That that little mechanism in there, I get it in and it's aligned, but it's not chooched in hard enough, you know, to get it to not lock up. So it locks up over currents. It just, uh, the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. So we're gonna put this in the round to it pile and when I need it for cert we'll have another go at it. Even you know these things well interestingly you look at it it's from Switzerland you think she'd be right fucking skookum and uh, plastic parts uh, no user serviceable stuff inside if she ain't working throw it the fuck out because you spend a month of Sundays trying to fix the Jesus thing and uh, end up exactly where I am nowhere <laughs> Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice. Happy to hear any kind of suggestions. Appreciate it.